The best I have heard is from a nurse who said that one night she was floated on to oncology at the hospital where she was working. She was given a patient who was passing away and had been unconscious for several days. At one point during the night, the nurse went into the room and the patient was on top of the bed and looked at her and said, don't let them take me. The nurse was freaked out and asked the patient who was going to take her. She said that black thing up there and pointed into the air. The patient died within minutes. We had a patient who was always on the call button. You know the type. The nurses have to take turns during their shift answering call buttons so the primary can actually do other work. I work 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. He died about 8 p.m. Oh, and the look on his face, like, how could you let me die? Like it was our fault? Anyway, family came and was gone by 9 p.m. The funeral home was gone by 9.30 p.m. About 10 p.m., the call button starts going off. I was there. A call button going off every five minutes. One of the nurses was a very spiritual girl. At about 2 a.m., after like four hours of this, Nurse Mary snaps. Enough. She walks down and practically screams into the empty room. Mr. X, you have died. You can't be here bothering us anymore. Move along. In the name of Jesus, I'm exercising you from this place of existence. Go to the light and be happy. And I kid you not, the call button stopped going off then and there. I don't know if this qualifies as a ghost story, but here it is. I was taking care of a 12-year-old with a plastic anemia. A week before she died, every day at 12.15 p.m., I would get a cold chill across the back of my neck, and the hair that was there would stand up. I mentioned it to the evening nurse who was convinced that she would die at that time. Several days later, her parents decided to cease all treatment. She lapsed into a coma. At 12 noon, she woke. She asked me to hold her up. She said goodbye to her parents, grandparents, and siblings, and died in my arms. It was 12.15 p.m. I work as a CNA in long-term care. We had one resident, Betty, who was totally independent. All ADLs were done on her own, and she did fine with them on her own. Never had an incident. The only time she wanted us to help was with showers, and that was just to make sure she didn't slip and fall. Betty came down with pneumonia and had to be hospitalized. When she came back, she was too weak to do things on her own, but too stubborn to ask for help. The last thing the CNA told her before going to bed was, if you want to get up, hit your call light and I'll come help you. Of course she didn't. Got rid of that bed alarm, climbed out of bed and fell. Betty died from that fall. Her bed has been empty since. The following week, the call light for the room went off at night. Thinking it was resonant in bed B, I walked down to the room to see what she wanted. I walked in the room only to see the call light for bed B and A off. The call light for bed C, Betty's unoccupied bed, was on. My eyes filled with tears and I backed out of the room and made someone else turn off that call light. This is really more of a possession than a ghost story. I was helping another nurse with a patient that had lived a very hard life. He had numerous things going on with him, from cardiac to renal failure. This man was very much afraid to die. Every time his heart monitor beeped, he would just go into a rage, screaming, Don't let me die! Don't let me die! The other nurse and I found out why he didn't want to die. At about 0200, his cardiac monitor starts alarming VTEC. Both of us run into the room. I'm pulling the crash cart behind me. When we get to his room, the other nurse is completely white. This man was sitting about two inches above the bed and was laughing. His whole look completely changed. His eyes just had a look of pure evil in them. And he had this evil smile on his face as well. He laughed at us and said, You stupid bitches aren't going to let me die, are you? And he laughed again. We were kind of frozen. I did reach up and hit the code blue button. And when I did, the man went into V-fib. He crashed back onto the bed. We started coding him. But after 20 minutes, it was called. Five minutes after the code, 
several of the code team is in the room cleaning up when this man sits straight up in the bed and says, you let him die? Too bad. And then begins laughing. The man collapsed back onto the bed. We heard a horrible, agonizing scream. Actually, every patient in the unit that night commented on the scream. And you could hear, don't let me die, being whispered throughout the unit. Every one of the nurses that night was pale and scared. Nobody went anywhere by themselves. By morning, the whispers of, don't let me die, were gone. The night shift nurses had a prayer service in the break room before we left, and we all had nightmares about this for weeks. Hi, I'm sorry this is late. My laptop crashed and my hard drive is done, it's dead. So I had to figure out how to fix it, or rather pull the hard drive out of our other laptop and put it in this one. This actually wasn't even the video I wanted to post, I wanted to post something else, something I thought was more interesting. But this is interesting, I think it has its own appeal. Uh, and I promise I'm not recording from a potato, it's my phone because I'm just starting out, this is only my third video, so hopefully I will get better recording equipment shortly, that'll be exciting. And uh, if you liked it, please subscribe and please hit the thumbs up button, it would make me very happy. Don't forget, there's always someone or something watching you.